Yeah, look at that. Right into the middle of the road. Wow. Oh, okay. Uh, can it see the cyclist? It's not saying that it sees the cyclist. It's done it. I've officially overtaken someone. No way. We've overtaken someone on autopilot. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're actually in a 2015 Model S here with the original autopilot system. So I believe this is the mobile eye system where it just has the one camera up here that's controlling everything. So rather than having the eight cameras, obviously it normally has three up here, uh, four on each kind of door and then one at the rear. Uh, we've now just got one at the rear and one up here, but I don't believe the rear camera actually does anything. So this system has uh, not really been updated loads, but I've got to be honest, from what I've used of it so far, it's actually quite good. It's not its not as good as I would say as, see you can go, we're going quite wide here. There we go, we're back in now. It's not as good as the system we've obviously got now on uh, Autopilot 2.0 and uh, 2.5, and with full self-driving coming along, it's going to be way, way behind. But surprisingly, this has some features that even my Model X doesn't have, and actually no brand new Tesla has, which is really, really strange, and we're going to go over those uh, right now with you today. So I'm going to be doing a three-part episode on this system. This is number one. This is just kind of normal roads. These are going to be A and B roads in the UK, uh, not like countryside or anything like that, just kind of normal roads. We're then going to test it on a city, and then we're going to test it on the motorway to see how it works. Now you can see here it is tucking close to the right, and I do remember that's what these cars used to always do. We used to tuck to the right a lot here. But the one thing that I've noticed that this has that even my Model X and like I said, no new uh, Tesla has right now is the ability to read signs. So you can see that obviously this is a 40 and my Tesla would also know that this is a 40. But when we've gone through new areas where signs are brand new and my Tesla hasn't been updated with the new maps, it's actually slowed down and got to the correct speed. So for example, just before here, there's a new area which has just turned into a 50 from a 60. My car will do 60 straight through it and just blast through it and not even think twice. This car actually shows 50 here and then slows the car down. So this is actively reading signs. Why are the new Teslas not doing that if the old Teslas can do it? It's so, so strange. But so far here, it's working well. You can see there's two lines here and I'm gonna show you something pretty uh, weird. Uh, if you actually indicate like that, I won't do it now, I didn't realize there was a car coming. Uh, when you actually indicate on a road even like this, which obviously it's you know one way that way and one way this way, it will go onto the other side of the road. Seriously, you can overtake in this car using autopilot on a normal road and I really hope that I can show you that today. So we're gonna do a uh, about a, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 miles journey here just to see how well it works. So I'm expecting here to go all the way over to the right but it's not, it's kept nice and straight and no problems at all. One thing you will notice about this system as well is the lines here disappear quite often. And that does get quite kind of concerning to be totally honest. And I have also noticed that when lines disappear, it actually lights up the car in front blue and it seems to track the car in front rather than what our car does now, which is not that, it just kind of does it all itself. We're quite close over to the left, so I'm hoping it moves slightly right. So for example here, I'm going to just go into this right-hand lane. And to do that, you have to hold up the uh, indicator. So you see, I've put the stalk all the way up. And now if I bring the stalk down like that, it will obviously now just stop and go back into normal lane. So the lane changing on this car as well, I think is better than my Model X. I really do. Whoa. Okay, so I had to uh, control it there. It was actually following that line and was kind of going over there, which was a little bit risky. So there's no one in front of us. As you can see, the road is nice and clean and clear. So what I'm gonna do here in a second is show you what I mean by it will swap lanes. Actually, this road's quite wide, so it might not do it. No, you see, so it's shown on there very briefly. It shows another lane. And that's what I'm meaning. It will go into that other lane if it shows it. Okay, there's no one coming. I'm gonna wait and see if it shows us that lane. Come on, show us the lane, show us the lane. No, it's not wanting to do it. What if I just do it now out of interest? No, nothing, it's just saying check blind spot. So when, only when it seems to see another lane here, it will actually go onto the other side of the road. But very, very interesting. It's keeping it nice and straight, nice down the middle here, pretty happy with that. 
you can see that there's no left line here, which is a little bit concerning. It's just because there, when there is no left line on the road, this system will not show you anything and it would just be like, no, I can't see it. I'm just kind of guessing where the edge of the road is. But it's working very nicely. And I've got to say, I'm overly amazed by how just the one camera up here with the, obviously with the sensors can do so well. So you can see there is again, showing us the other side of the road. So if we would have done it there, it would have happily taken us onto the other side of the road, which is just so bizarre. Okay, it's getting quite close to the left here. You can hear it going in each pothole on the left and that's obviously not great. There we go, starting to drift out a little bit. That's better, that's where you want it to be. So it seems to be a little bit more bouncy. I think my autopilot seems very strict that yes, I'm going in the middle of the road, whereas this kind of, kind of bounces and meanders around when you're doing corners. But this really isn't made for this. It is very much just hi uh, highway usage, whereas the new autopilot is obviously a lot more uh, acceptable and a lot better on these kind of roads. Let's see if it's gonna slow us down here coming into this roundabout. I don't think it's going to. It should start slowing us down now. Oh, it is actually, it is, look at that. How much is that gonna slow us down by? It's picked this lane. I'm gonna have to obviously come off of um, autopilot myself here. I'm in the wrong lane, there's no one left of me. There's no one around me at all actually, so I totally did that roundabout wrong, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, autopilot, you're gonna come back on. Now, one thing I have had is trouble sometimes getting it on, <laughs> on autopilot that is. Uh, it seems to be like a little bit more hesitant to try and get going. Whoa, whoa, okay, wow. That was kind of flinging us all over the place. Oh, it's still keeping us in the lane. Jeepers, do you see, I haven't got the thing on here. I'm sorry about that. But did you see how it kind of went left and right and started really taking us quite close there to that left-hand side? Okay, let's try it again. This is how I remember autopilot being from when I first picked up my Model X, by the way. You couldn't use it on roads like this and be happy and confident, whereas now you can. So you see here, this van's coming over to our side of the road, so I had to obviously take it off and move over. Let's see. following this quite nicely. The middle line disappears here, but these new left lines have been painted recently actually, so it might be okay. Yeah, it's actually following that really well. Slightly more central than I'd like to be right now, if I'm being honest. But then it's gonna flick us back in. Yeah, nice. Okay, so we're turning right here and there's actually a cyclist in front of us, which is gonna be quite interesting. Right, let's see, what does the autopilot system think of this cyclist here then? Now, obviously I can't overtake him just yet because there's a car coming. Can it see the cyclist? It's not saying that it sees the cyclist and autopilot is not actually wanting to engage. Oh, there he is. Okay, so it brought him up as a motorbike actually right at the end there. But oddly, it wasn't it wasn't quite showing him as confidently as I would like. Like, okay, we're going into the middle of the road. Right, so if I put that back on, yeah. So here you can see it thinks this is just like a one, a one street. So it just brings us over to the middle of the road. And obviously that's not what we want. I'm gonna try it one more time here. Yeah, it's brought us into the middle. Okay, there's no lines at all now. And there's no one coming, so I'm all right to do this for a minute. But look, we're on the right-hand side of the road. Jesus, I'm going all the way back over here to the left. <laughs> wow, okay, that is very, very much so pulling me all the way across, which obviously is not what you want. Um, I'm not gonna put autopilot on yet just because I can't see around that corner. Yeah, it's not wanting to work here either. Just gonna pull it down a little bit. Put it back on there. Yeah, look at that, right into the middle of the road. Wow, God, this is so unsafe. I forgot it used to do this. And like, it pulls you onto the right-hand side. Now, I'm not sure if that's because it's an American car, but it's a little bit worrying that it does it. But again, like I said, this is the old hard hardware suite. 
and you guys know that autopilot now doesn't do things quite like that like it used to so obviously bear that in mind all right this is a absolutely hideous junction Right, back onto autopilot. Interestingly enough, it's not showing a speed actually. And it's actually restricting me for some reason to 45 miles an hour, which is weird because this is a 60 road. Okay, now it's saying it, there we go. Now it's brought it back up. See what I mean? It's just, whoa, it's just a little bit slow at doing what it wants to do. Yeah, definitely don't use this auto, don't use an old Tesla on these kind of roads on autopilot. It's really quite, quite frisky sometimes. So I'm going 45, obviously, in a 60 here. And I do do this bit on autopilot at 50 in my Model X, and it has no problems at all. I know that it does all of this fine. So let's see if it'll do it at 45 on the old system. Okay, it's doing it so far. This is where we could have troubles. The brow of the hill. This used to be like hell for old Teslas. Whoa, a little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit left. We're still, we're still going though. This is, yeah, you don't want to use this like on these kind of roads. Whereas on, with the with the new hardware, with the Model X, I feel so safe when it's on these roads. I kind of let it, it's going to really swing hard here. Oh, oh no, it didn't. It, it actually stayed in the middle. It was about to, but then decided to stay in the middle. Oh, okay. Uh, autopilot just aborted on me completely. And I have no idea why. Wow, that was unexpected. Now, one thing I have noticed as well on this system is that you actually don't have to put your hands on the wheel that often at all. Is it going to corner it? It's done it. It's done it. Again, it's more bouncing. Whoa, where are we going? <laughs> yeah, nope, 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 nope. Don't like that at all. Don't feel confident or safe doing that one little bit. Right, let's go. I was going to go straight over there, but... I've just noticed that a load of horses are crossing, so let's go this way instead, shall we? Now, this is a lovely fast road, really straight and easy to drive down. And I would hope it would have full confidence in doing this road. So again, we've got that thing coming up saying we could go on the right-hand side of the road. There's no one around us now, so if that comes up now, I'm just gonna give it a quick, quick go. Again, next time I see it come up. There we go. I'm just going to see. Yeah, look at that. It will do it. I'm pretending like I'm overtaking someone. Wow. It actually will do it. That's insane. That is actually insane. So you can actually... Oh, man. Wow. You see that? Like, that's me slightly turning, and it feels like it's going to go off. So you can definitely overtake someone on a normal road like this using autopilot, and you cannot do that with the other system. So does that make this more advanced or less advanced? I'm not I'm not 100% sure actually. Now what we could do here potentially is overtake this uh this bus. Well, minivan. It's going uh it's going left here actually, so I can't. Actually, I can because there's no one on the other side of the road. And I'm accelerating. I'm ex it's done it. I've officially overtaken someone. No way. We've overtaken someone on autopilot and now we've got a porsche coming behind us that i think wants to have a little play but sadly i'm recording so i can't wow i've never i've never done that i've never been able to overtake someone like that on autopilot that's incredible Let me know actually in the comment section and hit the like button if I should get one of these maybe for a week to do some serious testing on it because I think there could be some very interesting situations you can get out of this old software and hardware. I think uh, it's, it's quite interesting. And I haven't noticed yet any sort of limitation on the amount of G-forces around a corner. This thing's, you know, taking me around some pretty tight corners and I've not had a warning saying keep your hands on the wheel or anything like that. So I don't know if this has to abide by the new EU and UN regulations. So 
So on a road like this, it seems actually really good. Nice and steady in the middle of the lane constantly. My sat-nav, I don't know if you can see my sat-nav, but my sat-nav is really strange. It's like super low resolution. It's like super low quality compared to the new one. Like look at look at how like low res this this uh, is here. Like it's all jaggy and weird. Um, and I've also noticed that this screen is slightly gone yellowy. I don't know if that's just with age, but it's not really an old car. Oh, okay, there we go. It was just buffering. It was just buffering. So you can see now that it's loaded up. There we go. So in conclusion with this Autopilot 1, is it worth it? Is it good? Should you get one with it on? Well, yes. Yes and no. It's very, very basic. I feel like I'm floating a little bit left and right, like across the road, if I'm honest. It doesn't feel nice and as solid as the new one. But then again, it does stuff that the new one doesn't, including recognizing speed signs, for some reason restricting me to 45 miles an hour on 60s out of nowhere. But obviously it can do things like overtaking on these roads without problems. And what you've got to do though, what you've got to remember, which you don't need to do as much. You obviously do need to do it legally, but I mean that the car is, the idea is the car will do it for you, is when you signal on like a highway or something, uh, you need to look out because I don't think the car can see anywhere around itself except for forward. Whereas obviously the new cars can see all around themselves and make judgments whether it's safe or not. You've got to make the judgments in this car. We're catching up now to this Honda in front. I'm intrigued to see when it decides to um, slow down and how close kind of it wants to get. And we're coming to a little bit of a dual carriageway. And again, I'm intrigued to know what lane the car decides to be in. I'm actually going to continue on after this and film through devices for my town slash city video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. That will be coming out next. Then it will uh, followed by a highway video. Okay, so we're coming on to the dual carriageway now. I'm just intrigued to see what lane the car picks. The car's decided to go on over to this right-hand lane. Uh, for some reason, though, it's not letting me do 70, even though this is a dual carriageway. There we go. Now it's picked 70. So it's gone for the overtake. Whoa. Wow. Okay, that was swinging us left. I don't know if that was picked up very well on camera, but that was actually swinging us left into that car, which felt very, very strange. Okay, tight corner. Ooh. It's just nowhere near as, as safe feeling as the new system. But obviously, that is props to Tesla and their uh, team on making the new autopilot way better than this one is here. So I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. Again, let me know down below. Uh, make sure to check out all my social links. And if you want to become a patron supporter and support the channel, we can do more cool tests like this. Until next time, thank you for watching. Don't forget, drive safe.